get on your feet and make some noise. Give it up for Miss Dania Corbin. Give it up. What she doing? It's t-shirt time! Give it up for Danielle! What's up, bitches? Chicago! Thank you. So great to be here. So great to be here. I've got my beer goggles on, so you all look amazing. You look fucking hot. <laughs> um, thank you, Scott. Nice to see you. Good to see you again. Hey, um, yes! How amazing we finally are here. Fuck yes! Holy shit, we finally made it. I'm so excited. Of course, um, I'm super sorry that Socks isn't able to be here. But please give him a massive shout out. Socrates! I spoke to him yesterday and I said, hey, do you want me to phone you so I can say hi to you? And he's like, I can't even speak. So, But he does send his love to you all. He's incredibly upset he can't be here. Um, but I'm here in spirit with him and with you too. Hey, um, sorry, I know Scott, he's like, oh, fuck, she's no. going to get up here and I'm not going to be able to get my questions in. Oh, my God, I just need to go nervous poos now. Do you get that thing when you go, I need to go nervous poos? I'll see you in like 20. <laughs> so I got here yesterday. Bernie and Nicole and I went out last night. So I'm feeling a little furry. I've got the, is it Chai Town? Yeah, I've got the Chai Town furriness going on. Not down there. Got a bit of that too, the Chai Town furriness down there. But other than that, yeah, like I said before, it's super great to be here and there's such a great energy in this room right now. I can feel it already. Oh, thank you, darling. I love you too. Fuck yes. It's so great to be here. And I know, thank you so much for all of your patience. Um, and, you know, I know that a lot of you would have bought tickets, what, two years ago or whatever. That, you know, like, but, you know, sometimes when you wait, good things come to those who wait. So, <laughs> um, I know I'm, I'm certainly grateful that we can be here now. Give Cheer it up for Danielle one more time. Okay. All right. So, we have lined so, the walls. All of these people are waiting to ask you questions. I'm not going to take up oh, any of your questions? time. questions? I just thought I'd stand up here and talk. <laughs> we're we're going to start over here on the left side. Go ahead with your name. Where are you from? What's going on? Hi. Hi. Hey. So, my name is Lisa. I'm from Wisconsin. And I know all these people are going to ask you really great Wentworth questions, so I'm going to go personal. Which do you prefer between your legs? I've got, I've got this thing going Davidson, on. Harley Davidson. Oh, yeah. Sportster. Yeah. Or a Ducati crotch rocket. Or. the speed. Oh, okay. So a motorbike question. It's a um, total motorbike for question. All, for all of those who don't know, I love riding motorbikes. And, um, <laughs> um, and I'm thankful to still be standing. I've had a few crashes in my life. I don't, you know what? I don't, I'm not such a, I, I ride Harleys because I'm an ambassador. But I don't mind, like, I, you stick me on a posty bike, that's fine. You know, I just, I like be, just being on two wheels. That's kind of cool. Awesome. Uh, are there any riders in the house? Yeah. Fucking heaps. We're, what's going on? <laughs> we, we need to, you need to take me around Chicago. We need to go for a ride. But thank you for that question. I, I, I don't mind anything between my legs. <laughs> mind uh, you, getting a bit old now. Hit that menopause point. I'm like, oh, what's going on? Not much. <laughs> Hot flash, hot flash or two. Who's in the menopause right now? 
fucking right? What is that shit about? No one tells you about that. They're like, oh yeah, okay, being a chick, da da da. You hit menopause, it's like, oh gee, thanks for that. Thanks for that one. No one told me my vagina would be dragging on the ground when I was 50. What happened there? Next question is going to be over here on the right. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. Um, my pineapple. Sorry, I should say pineapple dragging on the ground. Hi, sorry. Hi. You're fine. My name is Sierra, and we Hi, met Sierra. at the New Jersey Wentworth Con, and I told you I wanted to be a producer and director. Last year, I got hired as a producer, a producer and a director at a production company. Maine. So, Give it up for Sierra. Of course, my question is production-wise. What's your favorite thing about being on set? The people. I'm a people's person. I love being around people. Without people, the world wouldn't be spinning the way it does. We need to relate to one another in whatever form, whatever way. I'm beginning to sound like a televangelist or whatever, aren't I? <laughs> we need to relate to the people. Whatever way, whatever thing, what it all. Oh, hold on. I haven't been getting much acting work lately. Hmm. Um, <laughs> I, 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 it's all about connection for me. You can't, I just, I, alone, I'm my own worst enemy. If I'm sitting at home alone, I'm just like, oh, God. I love being around people, and especially in a creative environment. If I'm working with people and creating stuff together, I just love that. That's why Nicole and I work really well together in our company, because she's a creative um, entity as well, and we just bounce off each other. Love it. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Next question is going to be over here on the, on the left. Good. Go ahead. Uh, what's your name and where are you no, from? No, I love your mask. I was saying maybe, it's really nice to see so. a rainbow mask. It's a good one. Hi. Over here. Hi. What's going um, on? My name's Ever. I'm from Delaware. So you are good. my favorite bitch ever. I love you. Woo! So. This is the only time I get to be some kind I of vague rock star, so I'm milking it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> my question for you is, when you and Allie had gotten together, how was that? That was my favorite ever. Do you know what I really loved about that storyline? Was it allowed me not only to experience something I don't think B had ever experienced. Because, you know, I was in the skin of that character. You, you know, after four seasons of being in this, in, in this woman's world, created by all these writers and, and costume people and me, you know, you start to... For me, it was like I really started to vibe with her. And I hadn't had that experience with B of being coy and turned on and stimulated by someone else. All of her experience with other people was violence or manipulation or, you know, psychological abuse. So for me to be in the skin of her and have that kind of, oh, my God, you know, I've been touched like that or I, you know, it was like the first kiss, you know, and... I got to experience that too, so it was kind of nice for me. You know, I hadn't had that since I was like, I want to say 16, but it's probably like 12. You know, like, <laughs> started early, no judges. Remember, vagina on the ground, no judges. We're all human. Where's my friend Amanda Betts? Hi! Okay, I want you all to know that in New Zealand, I've known this woman before when my vagina was up here. Okay? <laughs> Amanda Betts is the most glorious human being in my world. She's going to be roaming around here. She's come all the way from NZ. We do a lot of work together, um, like uh, mostly initiated by her with um, At Vulnerable Youth. Um, she is Heartspeak. I don't know if any of you... Thank you so much for all your support. But this woman here... Hi, my darling. Come and see me after. Um, and, um, and I know I bought some Stay Gold t-shirts. If you see the t-shirts she's wearing today? Turn around, yeah, Stay Gold. I bought some t-shirts here as well. She's going to be roaming around, so come and talk to her. Get a t-shirt. Support the work. She's fucking amazing. So great to see you, honey. Thank you for everyone who supported our cause. <laughs> Ruling. What else is going on about... Over here on the right, what okay. you got? Hi. Hi, my name Hi. is Gina. Hi, Gina. Um, my question for you is, so as we can see, you on stage right now, you're just high energy, such a happy person. I'm drunk. <laughs> <laughs> no judges, vagina's on the ground. <laughs> I'm not really, but I am. But I'm not really, but I am. 
um, your performance as B was just so moving. Like you really made me feel what B would feel. And so my question is, how would you as an actress prepare at home, like the night before or the morning of, to get into that really deep mindset or like upsetting mindset? Because yeah, I, yeah. I don't think you just flip the switch like right now to... I actually sad, do so. though. That's really? a strange thing. I really? actually do. And I'm not being an asshole right now, uh -huh. but I am. Getting very anatomical today, isn't it? <laughs> Lots of body parts talk from me. But I kind of do, and that's my job. Yeah. I feel like that's my job. Sometimes it would be like a mind space of going, okay, what's going on here? You know, like, some, you know, if it was really intense, like, I'm losing my daughter. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? How does that feel? How would that feel in my body? You know, like, I work very, very um, cellularly. I work on a cellular level. So I was like, how does that feel in your body? How do, how do you move when you're really, really anxious? How do you move when you're really happy? How do you, you know, like, I don't think about it as an intellectual thing. We don't intellectualize our emotions. We feel stuff. Then we intellectualize. So like for me, I would just go, fuck, you know, and I just, I, it, so when you watch my performance, and I think sometimes I wish I was a little bit more subtle. I think I'm a massive overactor. Like, I watch my performance, I'm like, oh, tone it, yes, yes. <laughs> like, oh, the, no! <laughs> that was actually because someone said, you're going to be menopausal one day. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> but I do still put myself in that mindset. I don't... I try hard not to do too much work before I'm actually in the situation because nine times out of ten you're working with someone else. And if I was to do my whole performance without allowing that other person in, then I'm being a... It, it's, it is about relating to the other people in the room. Mm -hmm. You know, so I have to sit back and go, How, what are you going to bring? Or what are you other people going to bring? If I've done my performance and done it all there and they're bringing something different, it's going to be really strange. Thank Great you. question. Back over here on the left, red hair. Why do I feel like I want to jump on the furniture? <laughs> because it would stop me from jumping on you. <laughs> and you and you and you and you and you. <laughs> Imagine if I did the first Wentworth, what do you call it, crowd surfing thing. <laughs> okay, what's up? Over here. Hi. Hi. My name's Rachel. I'm from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And you are my absolute favorite, of course, <laughs> obviously. Um, so um, I'm going to read because I'm super nervous. I'm about to pee my pants. No, it's okay because I nearly pooed my pants before I came on, so we're fine. Between you and me, we'll be like in adult diapers in no time. Sweet. No judges, vagina on the ground. <laughs> so I came across Wentworth uh, a little late in the game. and. Okay. There was probably four seasons when I finally found out about this amazing show. Um, the very first scene with you in the back of the brawler had me hooked immediately. And I think I binged all four seasons right then and there in like a day and a half. So um, I also soaked in my um, amazing boyfriend that's over here in the corner. Where the are middle, you, boyfriend? In boyfriend in the middle. Where are you? <laughs> Stand up. <laughs> Fuck your brave. Yes! <laughs> Right now, in a room full of all these awesome bitches, you're brave. <laughs> yeah, he used to watch football and hockey and all the boys' stuff, you know. So you've and basically educated him. You've schooled him. Absolutely. Yeah. No more football. And now Wentworth. we drink wine and watch Wentworth. Yeah. <laughs> so my question was going to be somewhere along the lines of the last question. Um, like, how did you prepare for when Debbie died? And did you take that home with you? Like... I think I just answered this question yeah, over there, like you the did. same kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I, I, di I didn't prep. That's the thing. I just turned up and went, how does this feel? And it's like, because you can't prep for that. No one, no, no one does in life. And especially when it's something like that, you just, for me, I just go, I'll turn up to work, I'll go on set, and then I hear that information for the first time. So I am actually, rather than me going, oh, I've rehearsed this over and over and over before I got there. That's why it's so fresh. And the wonderful thing I love about, for me, um, for that whole scene, that storyline, is that I received so much correspondence from people who had lost a child. And it was so moving for me to hear, they were like, you know, that it, 
it resonated with them that moment. And I was like, God, you know, like, firstly, that's the most horrific thing. That, that, that goes against the laws of nature for anyone to lose a child before you go. Um, hello, can I answer it? Whose is it? I want to answer it. <laughs> Fucking give me the phone, I want to answer it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> hello, what's up? <laughs> Imagine that. Hi. Where's, did you put the oven? Did you, what, did you put the oven on? Did you put the roast in the oven? No. Anyway, I've got this thing. Going, I've got these fucking awesome leather pants on, right? Thanks. Thought you'd never notice. But, but, huh? Oh, thank you. Yeah, I made this jacket. Thanks for asking. Yeah, I just went. I went to the thrift store and I saw these two jackets. I was like. I'm gonna like cut it up the middle and sew it on. Nice. Sew it up. Shall I sell them? Yes. I've got, uh, my, pa my pants don't stay done up. They've, so if you hear this. Pineapple. That's my button popping. No judges. Pineapples on the floor. <coughs> Am I going over here now? Do we have to go off? It's vodka. It's vodka. <laughs> Next question over here on the right. Go ahead. No judges. No judges here. Who's judging? No judging. No judging. Do you want to stand up? Hi, nice to see you. Hi, how are you? Right. Hello, Danielle. Hi. Hi, I'm Margaret from LA. I'm here with my beautiful wife. Where are you, beautiful wife? Stand up, beautiful stand wife, up, show stand yourself. Up. Hey. <laughs> we got hooked during the pandemic. I love your damn energy. And you're still it's together? Amazing. After the pandemic? Oh, yeah. Give it up. Give it up, oh, please, yeah. people. Who stayed together during the pandemic? <laughs> Who didn't? Me. It's Broke been up from my partner. Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. You talk about being in bee skin. Um, and I, Bernie talking earlier about you guys reading the scripts and really kind of going along that journey of like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Were you just as upset when B died? I mean, I really <clears throat> yeah. was so bummed out that we didn't get to explore more of the B. Yeah, I, I, I felt like it was a massive shock when I got told that B was dying. Like, it was two weeks out from when I was finishing shooting anyway. Why are you laughing? I think we just spoiled oh, it for one shit! person. Oh, shit! Spoiled hey, it! That's not my fault. No, no, no. <laughs> that's hilarious. To be clear, it is that person's fault. For okay, who hasn't to seen the full a series yet? A seminar about a show they haven't finished. <laughs> who hasn't seen the full series yet? Bro! Sorry. No judges. <laughs> I need another beer, Daniel. Huh? That was the best. What a spoiler alert. Hey, you know that she dies. You don't know if she comes so back or not. I don't really right? die, but I do, kind of. Yeah, just a little stabby, stabby action. <laughs> no, um, I, I, I was really shocked when I, fir when I first heard that I was, like, really shocked. I was, like, w it, like confusion shocked. And I went to the producers. I was like, hold on. W why? Can you tell me why? Because I can't fathom it. I don't know why you want to kill this character off. And it wasn't necessarily me as, um, for the character. I just, my, pro, uh, my producer's brain went on. And I was like, I don't, why are you doing this? And, um, and then hearing their side of it in terms of the longevity of the series, of, you know, they were like, we want to keep making the show. So I hadn't thought about it like that. I thought though, I, well, we didn't even think we were going to make it past three series. You know, I was only an option for two. Then they were like, we can do a third, and we're like, cool. Fourth, cool. Fifth without me, bitches. <laughs> and it kept going, and I was like, but that makes sense. You have to get fresh blood. And it did invigorate the show. It was disappointing, it was very sad, but it invigorated the show, and it allowed new blood to come in. You know, and, and I, frankly, like, it still doesn't. Yeah, but, but TV shouldn't sometimes. It has to make us angry. It has to make us feel ripped off. It has to make us feel moved and, you know, and angry and, 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 and joyous and everything. That's why we keep tuning in, right? Yeah. But I still think I should have come back in the last episode. Yeah. Just, just like this, kind of like... Yeah. 
I'm bad, bitches. And mama wants some freakiness. You know, like, I think I should come back and just, like, slipped on a black leather glove. Kill the freak! And kill the freak. Yeah. <laughs> but I, no, 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 like, I think Pamela's amazing. I think, you know, like, but I just, I think that that should have happened. Yeah. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. I said that. Yeah. Then off. Well, just one episode where I come back and kill the freak, and that's it. <laughs> and scene. <laughs> you don't know me, and I don't know me. Next one's going to be down here on the left. Go ahead, Hi. sir. Hi. Queen motherfucking B. I Welcome like to Chicago. To <laughs> you know, I got to ask a question. When you watch it, the show when you go home. No, I don't watch the show. You never watched the show? I did when I was in it. <laughs> well, that's what I'm talking about. My question. Oh, but I I, after I got killed, I didn't watch it. My I question. I watched the last episode. I was like, who's that? Who? What? Ellie's in a wheelchair? <laughs> what the fuck happened when I was dead? Yeah, it was like, what the fuck's going on here? And who's the woman with the blonde hair who's being nasty to everybody? Like, there was all these new characters. Sorry, go. All right, here, listen. My question, you were in this episode when you sh put the bullet in that little punk-ass Brandon's, uh, Braden's <laughs> hat. But if you wa when you're watching that episode at home, do you feel like we feel, or even knowing you know obviously what's going to happen, do you get that, that tenseness, like shoot him in the fucking head? Yeah, I love, do you like my shirt? <laughs> no dresses, no dresses! No judges. I am wearing that shirt, aren't I? So I was drunk when I got dressed this morning. Just kidding. No, I'm not. Um, I, I love that scene. It's one of my favorite scenes. And I'll tell you why. Because after living through that first series, um, first season of, you know, so much pain, and then the second one of all of that, you know, like um, the blood coagulants and, you know, her plan, and you don't know what's happening, and then finally we see it come to fruition. And then, you know, the, 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 that it all works out really. I mean, it doesn't because she ends up, you know, in life, in, in prison for life, but that, that's all she wanted to do was get... Um, um, vengeance for her daughter's death. And so that one scene for me to do that was well worth it. Oh. And I'm not a violent, murderous person, but I really felt like that's what B needed to do. And it was from that point, it was like, I'm done. That's it. Great. I've done what I needed to do. Yeah, it was good. That's awesome. Thanks. Good question. I like that scene. A, a gun is very heavy. Who owns guns here? You do. Really? Holy sh... You're not, you didn't bring it here, no. Don't we're, answer that if you did. We're in America. <laughs> this is America. Um, we don't have guns in my country. The cops don't even carry guns. They carry, they carry like... They carry ol olive branches. You can stick it up, babe. Peace and love. Um, so, but, uh, you know, like a gun is heavy. And I had to carry that gun for like... A whole scene, by the end of the day, I was just like, so that was all real shaking. I wasn't even acting. So good. I wasn't even acting based. I was like, real, real styles. Okay. Next one's over here. Go ahead. Girl, I've been waiting for you. Hey, yeah. I am Team B-Max all day, all night. And I wanted to say shout out to um, Sox, who couldn't be here. Yeah. But you my girl, and he my dude. But I'm going <laughs> to tell you something. When you choke, fuck, slam, Harry down on that ground, girl. When you came around the corner after Juice messed with Doreen and you went like this. <laughs> when Maxine beat Juice ass and whipped that shower curtain, girl, girl. Girl, let me tell you something. I felt so good because in my family, we the same way. One together. You mess with one, you I mess with us it. all. You mess with one, we mess with us all. But I'm here to tell you, my name is Jamila. I'm from Buffalo. And if you ever need me, I am ride or die, baby. Sister, thank you so ride much. You're die. wicked. Jamila, Jamila. I just love it. It's like, I told you to eat your fucking salad. 
<laughs> I love that your family is like that. It's great. Uh, we'll move back over this side. Go ahead. What's your name? Where are you from? Hi, I'm Cindy from Ohio. Hi, Cindy. And you are my queen. <laughs> like, at work, my girl Veronica and I, your br our break room is all you. Aw, oh, yes, nice yes. one. Teal, Thank teal, you. Teal, teal all the way. Anyways, I'm real nervous. So anyways, oh, and she said to tell you she loves the red, the red hair. Oh, okay, well, I haven't got that so. anymore. Like, my pillow is <laughs> everything white that I own just turned pink, and I was like, yeah, I'm over the red hair. But I still, I still, I get questions all the time about what dye that was. And I was like, maybe I should franchise the dye. <laughs> you don't get paid much as an actor in Australia, clearly. That's why I'm always looking for little side hustles. <laughs> what can I do next? Oh. <laughs> That's my bitch. Are you guys going to do some Branky photographs later on? Hell yeah. I was trying to coerce Nicole to read some fan fiction with me on stage. I've never done this fan fiction stuff. Have you been reading the fan fiction? Is it good? Is it hot? Is it vaginas on the ground? Good, I'm up for it. Sorry, go. What's your question? Okay, so my question is, when you unfortunately died, were you upset that they brought Ellie back and not you? Like, like, she... <laughs> <laughs> Controversial. Because I, I was upset. I cried for weeks. Not did even you? joking. I did. You're my queen. I should have invested in some <laughs> tissues. Like a tissue company, a little sort of Wentworth tissue company. Like you can sit there with your teal box and wipe away your tears. Um, yeah. Look, I, I can't really answer the question because I can't really remember what you just asked me. <laughs> but <laughs> it was something to do with, <laughs> was I pissed off that Ali came back and not me? No, no, not nah, me. No problem with it whatsoever. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Look, um, I think it was, a, 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 you know, like all these choices, you never know which way they're going to go. And, you know, sometimes they work, the choices they make and sometimes maybe not, you know. But once again, they're just humans running for other humans, you know. I, I think that I think that Ali should have died yes, in the know. last episode. No, we are doing I didn't I didn't understand why she was able to get over those rocks. <laughs> like how? I don't know. Is there is there anyone here in a wheelchair today? Did, how could you fucking wheel over the rocks? You can't. See? From the horse's mouth. And, and, I don't know about you all, but if I was the warden of a prison, I think that I'd be a bit more concerned about all the other 500 people that got done in the explosion. Like, where's Ali? Where's Ali? Where's Ali? Is Ali okay? Is Ali okay? It's like, what about the other women? Yeah. Like, it seemed like they only cared about Ali. No disrespect to my sister Kate, because she's fucking awesome bitch. But I could not understand why they only cared about Ali. See what I'm saying? No wonder that prison's in a state of, like it is. They need to learn how to look after each other. Don't you post this. I'll get in trouble. I don't want to see no posting like this. No, that's not why they're filming at No all. filming. Uh, over here, on the right, go ahead. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um... Am I wearing you guys out? You're like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> What's your name? Joy. Hi, everybody. This is Joy. I wish I knew how to sign, but thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, what's up? Hi, um, my name's Riri, and I'm from um, Texas, but born and raised in Louisiana. <laughs> I love um, that everyone goes, yay, or, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, my question is, um, other than your character, is there a character that you, like, if you got in the writer's room, you would be like, yes, let me write for this character? I would like to play the love child of the freak and Frankie. <laughs> and just call her Freaky. 
This is like freaky. <laughs> like, acts like the freak, looks like Frankie. Best character ever. There's your spin off. There's your spin off. Like Frankie just walking around in black leather gloves. And we just take it from there. It's fucking brilliant. <laughs> and, and it's like a sort of a Killing Eve vibe. You know, like a Killing Eve, Frankie, Freak, everything. I, I could roll it all up into one. It'd be brilliant. And I play the role. <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to play the role of Frankie. When I first read the script, this is before anyone was cast, just on paper, so it was, there were no faces to the characters, I related more to Frankie. I did just my personality, not B. I, wa I related much more to that. Now, the fact that Nicole has played Frankie, I would never, like, no one else could play that character at all. Like, it's just the perfect cast actor. And, and she still remains. I, I mean, I'm completely biased because she's not only one of my very dear friends and a fantastic business partner, but I also have a huge crush on her. <laughs> and from the, <laughs> from the first day that I met her, every time I was on a scene with her, I was just like this. Gah. 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 Uh. And she'd be like, hello, can we do the scene? And I'd be like, Gah. Yeah. <laughs> Pineapple juice everywhere. Love this woman. But a great, like, but also she has created a phenomenal, iconic female character on screen, anywhere, anytime. You know? Me? Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. Great question. Next, we're going to go to the left. Go ahead. I feel like I've been up here for days. Are you sick of me yet? Oh! Fucking awesome. You, you can stay. Hi. Hi, my name's Jack. I'm from Chicago. Hi. I'm here with my stunning Yay. wife over here. Where are Jordan. you? Stand up, stand up. She's Hi, right. baby. <laughs> we're, we're arguing who's going to stand next to you in the picture. but um. <laughs> You can stand next to me in the picture. Okay, go. Um, so I know you already answered this question about being able to turn on and off kind of um, how you're going to react in certain scenes, like when Debbie died. Um, but I know in real life you are a mother. Do you think that you felt the scene when Debbie died deeper because you are a mom? Uh, possibly. Possibly. I try not to bring my own personal experience into work. I bring myself to my roles. But I really try, it's a challenge for me to just, to not go, oh, okay. Um, when my puppy died, I really need to get into the scene. You know, when I was five years old, and the puppies, and the little puppies, and then, you know, I try not to. I really try just to go, I'm, I've lost my daughter. And the, my daughter is the most important thing. So I just try to go right into that character and try to do it that way because I feel like it's cheating if I'm not. Now, actors, there are so many different processes of... Of, uh, of capturing a performance or capturing a character. But for me, I just, I just allow myself to be, because I'm so, I'm, we're all so vast. We carry universes inside of us if we allow ourselves to experience it. You know, and I might not have been a, a, a this or a that, but I feel like I have the experience. We all do. Like, you don't have to lose someone to feel how it must feel. I mean, we can't assume anything, but I think when we open ourselves up to experiences, we kind of know. Unless you're a psychopath. <laughs> Not looking at anyone in particular, Danielle. Um, but I think we do. We, we, the more that we open ourselves up to the universe, the more that we can, you know, connect with one another and really feel each other's experiences. And I feel like that's what it's like as an actor. I just try and do that, which is why I love coming to these events, because I get to meet you all. It's like I feel like people that shut themselves off from the world, in my, in my line of work, how the fuck can you play a human being if you're not meeting human beings? You know, if you're like rolling around going, I've got my security and I don't want to talk to you, no photos, no photos, you know, no, no, you can't see me, because, you know, you can't see me because I'm not allowed to be out in public. No photos, no photos. It's like, how the fuck can you be an actor if you can't fucking meet people? Oh my God. No? Why can I have my phone out right then? So that's when I feel like, hi, darling. 
That's what I feel like, because you've got to be around people and meet them. <laughs> oh, God, see? <laughs> that was my vagina on the ground. <laughs> I don't know my vagina. I'm so sorry about all the people that find the word vagina offensive in the room, because I've said vagina about 15 million times today, haven't I? <laughs> vagina, vagina, vagina. Uh, okay. We're going to be back over here. We've got about 15 minutes left, and I think I, my count, we have seven questions left. We can do it, guys. We're going to get to all of you. Let's just try to keep them quick. And go if ahead. not, you can ask me when you see me on the ground later on. There you go. At the bar. Hello. Um, well, you um, met me in um, Jersey, and you may have um, remember the nickname Carrot Top that Kate Jenkinson gave me. <laughs> I had really orange hair. Um, so, yeah, um, my actual name is... Catherine, but people call me Joey, so whatever Hi, you Joey. want to choose. Um, and um, I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. And I don't know if you're able to kind of go into this because I don't know if it's like taking away from anything if we know, but can you tell us a little bit about some of like the scenes where there is like blood, like when you get sliced on your forehead yeah. or like when Frankie's getting her breast cut by Jax or the steam presses, like because you have like a box cutter coming at you and it's like, like how yeah. do you, it, it literally looks like you're getting like sliced in the face. So like, how do you like, like, is there like a package of- Yeah, so, so all of that stuff work? is very technical and you know, like sometimes when you've got a lot of money, you can do that stuff with CGI. Um, you know, our show didn't have a great budget, which is why it looks a bit trashy sometimes. But that's the beauty of it, you know? Um, but I, I'm talking comparatively to like an American style television or American show, you probably have maybe three times the budget that we had. So that kind of stuff, like, you know, um, it's all just a matter of smoke and mirrors, you know? Like they'd be, they might shoot the first part of that scene and then they'd call cut and then they'd rig like a little scar on me and then they'd roll again and then they'd, so if you look at the editing of stuff, you know, it's the magic of television. And, I, and like, uh, there's a lot of shows or, you know, like, behind the scenes of shows that you can, movies, that you can watch all that stuff and find out if you want to break the, the, you know, the suspension of disbelief. Was what that a thing? real box cutter? Like... No, like, probably not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did that just for my art. Okay. Yeah. No, a lot, a lot of that stuff, like, safety is paramount on a set. And there's been some pretty crappy things that have happened in the last year or so. Yeah. You know, there was a horrible... Um, Alec Baldwin. Yeah. So, even more so now. You know, all that stuff, you're going to have rubber things. And, like, you know, I mean, that's why you see, like, and I hated this. You can see the padding I'm wearing. And when I get stabbed, suddenly I'm like... And then I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> What, B suddenly had 15 million burgers in the space of 30 seconds? She comes out, she's like, rolling in it. Um, because I had to wear so much padding. And I'm like, don't, don't know. You know, and they've got retractable stuff and, you know, it's all that. I think the biggest scene that I had to shoot that was really technical and very difficult in terms of, you know, like trying to get it right was the, the and I hope I'm not triggering anyone here, but the wrist slitting scene. Because we had to rig up all these blood bags and, you know, it was just... And you don't have much time. It's not like you've got hours and hours and hours to shoot these scenes. You've got to do it pretty quickly. But that was technically very, very hard. And also the stabbing of Jacks in the neck. Yeah, that was, that was wicked. Holy shit. It was stupid. One minute I'm getting a little splatter of blood, next minute I'm carpet. <laughs> like, that was a bad period. Thank you, Carrot Top. Uh, next one over here on the left. Fuck heaven this. You only bleed a little bit. Now I'm covered. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Danielle. I'm Chris from Hi, Pennsylvania. Chris. Hi. How are you? Good, thank you. So the, my takeaway from the B and Allie relationship was that they were like soulmates, that it was meant to happen. Mm -hmm. And my question for you is, do you believe that with how quickly they fell in love, do you believe in love at first sight? Because... I met my wife and it was very quick and we've been together for eight years. It's actually our eight year uh, anniversary this weekend. Congratulations. Is your wife here? Where are you? Congratulations, honey. Well done. Um, do I believe in love at first sight? 
But what is love? Here's a question for you. I've actually... I'm, I'm We've really got 10 minutes, just so you know. Just 10 minutes for... Ten, I'm just kidding. <laughs> love oh, is, what is love? Love is this. <laughs> well, because, Danielle, I, I almost... <laughs> No judges. <laughs> I almost I, took I, what she did to Ferguson, like what, what B did to the freak. I almost felt that she did that because she thought she lost Allie anyway. So she had lost everything in her yeah. life and now she lost Allie. So this was worth dying for. Yeah. So that's why I felt like it was quick and they were soulmates because yeah. of that decision. I think, you know, and, and once again, like you've, you, the provocation here is really interesting to me. You know, what is love? Uh, do we have soulmates? Are we supposed to be monogamous? Do we have love for lots of people in our lives? You know, like I've been terrible in relationships. I've had one successful relationship after another. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. <laughs> but I also arrived at this point now where I think, is love, love, that feeling of like, oh, I don't know for me anymore. I think for me, the, the point of it is respect. And I... You know, to look at someone and really respect them, I think, is real love. It's not that feeling that makes me feel the butterflies, because actually butterflies for me is anxiety. And anxiety is danger. And that's why love is dangerous, right? <laughs> so to me, I feel like when I'm with someone and I feel a sense of calm, to me that's love. I think with B and Ali, I think that the, the feeling for B that she was able to feel something she'd never felt before, it wasn't, I think the feelings to her were, it was completely new for her. And that's what it was. I don't think she felt that with Harry. I don't think she'd been with many other people, actually, frankly. You know, what's that? <laughs> Fuck Harry. Fuck Harry. But, you know, like, you know, thankfully she got to, before she left the world, she got to have a moment where she actually felt, you know, like a... a <laughs> And, and she felt loved, and she was able to love somebody as well. And it was fleeting, but that's good drama. You wanted them to, like, how, how tragic was it that they weren't able to? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's Shakespearean. Next one's going to be over here. Oh. It's my new favorite sound. <laughs> how do you do that? Joy, how do you do that? <laughs> I love it! Did you see that? Please, you got to come up here. I love this. Come up here. No, come up here. Come up here. Can you get up? Come up here, darling. Now, I'm going to walk, and can you sign up for me? Okay, you're ready. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, next one's over here, Daniel. So many questions. Yeah, we've got, I think we only have time probably for two more, just so you guys know. Can we not uh, stay up here? So let's get, get uh, over here, guys. No, because you're waiting for Nicole to silver, aren't you? You're really here to see her, not me. <laughs> Bad chance. All right, Queen Bee, She's quick hot. question. Love you, by the way, but what's one of your favorite scenes in Wentworth? Like, the whole series. I like, kid you not. One of your favorite I scenes. I kid you not. My, one of my favorite scenes is when I get to see Frankie at the, in season four. Oh, we love that and one. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Because Nicole and I hadn't seen each other for ages either. Because she'd been off doing her other fancy TV shows. While well, I was still stuck in prison. <laughs> um, <laughs> eating chicken. Um, <laughs> um, but I hadn't seen Nick for ages, and so we got to shoot that scene, and it was like, I, I, I was kind of me and my character and me, and I was like, oh, yay, Nick, Frankie. It was really lovely. That wasn't acting, you know? It was really cool. All right, next over here. And shooting Brayden. <laughs> Go ahead over here on the left. I'm Stacy, and I'm, Hi, here, Stacey. I'm here with my sister, Shayna. Hi, Shayna. What's up, Shayna? What's up, Shayna? I, I know your character was very emotionally draining to act, I'm sure. I thought you were going to say it was emotionally draining to watch. 
<laughs> Being a, playing an abuse victim going into a woman's prison, I mean, that's emotionally... Yeah. But how did you physically prepare for it? I mean, you got bashed all the time, and then yeah. the freak tried to drown you. Come on. Yeah. So I, I love the process of, of researching characters and becoming a character. Not becoming, it's actually just finding, it, like I said before, finding those parts of me that relate to a character like that. Now, I can't, you know, I, sadly, I have been in relationships where it's been pretty shitty. So I was able to kind of have a little bit of that, but also I did a lot of research in domestic violence. Um, sadly, um, you know, still rife in our communities. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be an advocate against anything, coercion, domestic violence or anything, um, which is, uh, once again, Amanda does a lot of work um, through HeartSpeak of, of working with women that have um, been in that situation. But for me, I love doing things like, what perfume would she wear? Does she wear perfume? How does she dance? Does she dance? What's her favourite song? So for me, for B, she was a complete Adele freak. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I don't think that song came out at that point, but I thought she was like, rolling in the deep. Like, she was like... <laughs> she was a bit sort of... I'm not saying that Adele is trashy, but she was kind of a bit sort of trashy. You know, like, her hairdressing salon wasn't the height of fashion, you know? Um, so I just, you know, I danced. I tried to get into her body like that, you know. Um, and but with the domestic violence stuff, all that stuff when you're shooting it, it's very uncomfortable for everyone. And you know, the, the people want to shoot it very quickly. You know, the the scene in the kitchen and the kitchen table for me, you could hear a pin drop because the rest of the crew and the cast they have to shoot it, but no one really wants to shoot it. I just want to say, from a domestic violent survivor, you helped me. Oh, thank you, honey. Thank you. And thank you. I, my heart to you. Uh, and I get a lot of that. And that, for me, is another thing. You know, what is the best part of the job? Not just meeting people, but hearing stories back. Hearing how, you know, that, it, that, that a storyline has helped you or moved you or activated you in ways that you haven't been before. And to me, I just go, fuck. Yes, that's why I do this. Like, that is amazing. So thank you for sharing that. And I'm sure there's a few people in this room that have had a similar experience. Once again, sadly. You know, my heart goes out to you. And, you know, for me, I take this responsibility of playing those characters with, uh, you know, a huge weight of responsibility. You know, um, with, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a funny little fucker. But I'm also not. I'm also not. I'm a very serious, heartfelt person too. And to me, that stuff is a great responsibility and I don't mess around with it. Yeah. Give it up for Danielle, everybody. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have. Stand on your feet, make some noise. The one and only Danielle Cormack. I love you all. I'll see you in the photo ops before I break this table. Thank you so much. Thank you, Scott. Thank you for all your questions. Yeah. You're amazing. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'll see you all soon. Good. Give it up one more time. <laughs> I love you all. <laughs> awesome. She's going to go do those thank photo you. ops right now.